We continue to follow the latest developments out of Aurora, Colorado, uh, where the attorney uh, general has found a pattern of racial bias and excessive use of force in the city's police department. Uh, BNC's Ansar Hassan has more in Colorado. Joseph Akai knows what it's like to deal with the Aurora Police Department. I saw that I was being followed by this police and he pulled me over because at that moment I knew I had not done anything. I was on my way to work. His crime? Accidentally crossing over the yellow line. I'm sure the police have much better things to do than, I mean, stop somebody or pull somebody over for straying. Okai was lucky. He just got a written warning. Was it racial profiling? Was it a proper traffic stop? Either way, Okai believes Aurora police deal differently with communities of color. And Colorado Attorney General Phil Weiser agrees. His department issued a 120-page report detailing what they called a pattern and practice of racially biased policing. His department's 14-month-long investigation found that the Aurora Police Department has a culture in which officers treat people of color, especially black people, differently than white people, and where law enforcement frequently escalate encounters with civilians. Among the findings, Aurora police officers use force against people of color two and a half times more than against whites. Almost half of those incidents involve black people. The department also arrests people of color 1.3 times more than white people and black people twice as many times as compared to white people. Those numbers become more problematic given the demographics, where white people are 60% of the population and black people accounting for about 17%. Aurora City Council member Juan Marcano believes the issue stems from the culture of the city's police department. Ours uh, here in Aurora uh, is a holdover from the, frankly, um, white supremacist elements uh, in our city. Marcano says there is the political climate right now that is forcing change. He also credits the Aurora police chief, Vanessa Wilson, for taking action to change the culture over the past year. She's been willing to terminate folks who are not living up to the expectations that she has set for the department. This is wrong, that we need to have um, a police, police in our communities that we trust, um, and that right now we quite frankly do not. And in 2020, State Representative Leslie Herod sponsored the Colorado State Police Accountability Bill. It gives the Attorney General the power to investigate police departments and sue if necessary. She attributes the family of Elijah McLean for being champions in the police reform effort. McLean was a young unarmed black man who died six days after being put in a chokehold by police and sedated by paramedics with a powerful drug. She says without more accountability, more people of color are at risk. We heard what happened to Elijah McLean. We know he was murdered at the hands of law enforcement, paramedics, and fire. And we know that there was going to be no accountability after that murder unless the people of Colorado spoke up. I'm Ansar Hassan for Making the Case. There are several legal headlines to cover and unpack coming out of Minnesota tonight. After the break, we're examining the state Supreme Court reversal of the third degree murder conviction for former Minneapolis officer Muhammad Noor. That story and more after this.